procedural rigid body simulation using particle flow and 3ds max so i'll show you how this flow is set up here i just have a cache modifier on so it'll play back faster but i'll show you how to build it from scratch ultimately you're going to need a birth grid which is how you birth some particles you're going to need to give them a shape and you're also going to need to give them a colliding shape, which is separate. Um, I'm using a sphere just for rendering time, but what that means is that around each one of these letters, there is an invisible sphere that collides off the other sphere shapes. Um, just put on some spin, and then at the very beginning, um, so the particles are not static, I'm having them move to the next event using an H test. And then in the next event, it fires off some forces and spins around the particles. And one of the forces within that is gravity. So that's what's kind of pushing and pulling all of these different uh, letters apart and back together. So I'm just going to turn off the cache modifier here. Turn off this particle flow. Let's move this out of the way. So the first thing you're going to need in an empty scene, tap six, the letter or the number six, in order to bring up particle flow view, create a new empty flow, and then you're going to need a birth grid. Now, if you're not seeing um, birth grid or any of these other events here, you're going to need to probably install the Orbaz toolbox, which you can find on. Um, the orbaz.com website. This brings some functionality that um, newer versions of 3ds Max have integrated now by default. But if you're using something older like 3ds Max 2009, 2010, and up until I believe 2015 or so, you're going to need to install these plugins in order to get the same functionality. So hopping back in here. So within a birth grid, it's birthing a bunch of different particles within this grid. And so each one of these particles, we need to define a shape. So let's bring in the shape modifier. By default, it is set to cube, but let's set it to sphere. And the reason you're not seeing any geometry is because we need to set it from ticks to geometry. So my birth grid is kind of small here. Let's just increase the size to 15 or so. Um, you'll notice that the reason why it's disappearing is because we also need to set it within the modifier settings. Oh, that might be too big here. Let's just do 50. Actually, I'm going to bring down the grid size. That looks good. Actually, you know what? I'm going to change the shape to letters. Okay, so by default, they're going to all be orienting upwards, but let's add some spin here. Perfect. Okay, and add some random rotation. good okay so right now these particles have no collision shape meaning there's a lot of intersecting that's going on um, they're not aware of the other shapes around them so in order to create a rigid body simulation we're going to need to put a cage around each one of these individual particles so let's bring in the shape operator here by default, when you're dragging in the MP shape, it's going to be set to a box. We need to change it to a sphere. Now, the only reason I'm using a sphere, which is literally looking at each one of these particles here, um, looking at each one of these points, and it's drawing an invisible sphere object around each one of these points, which is going to be used as its collision cage, so that these spheres bounce off each other. The only reason I'm using sphere is because of its speed. 
if you look at the other shape options here, you can use box, which is going to give it um, a different result. Or you, if you want it to actually match the shape of the particles themselves, you change it to convex hull. But keep in mind, it's much slower. And so if you want to have a more realistic simulation, uh, convex hull is a perfectly good choice. Or if you have um, an amazing computer, that's also an option. But for now, I think for the sake of this tutorial, I think we're just going to use that sphere collider. So right now, these particles aren't going to actually be doing anything other than just kind of spinning around in their position. We need to add an age test. And let's just change it to 20 or so. And what that means is that when the particles hit an age of 20, send them to the next event. So let's just create a new force operator. Connect the two together. By default, the force operator doesn't have any forces included, so you're going to need to add some from the uh, modifier menu over here. You're going to need gravity. And in this case, set it, it by default, you're probably going to be seeing this planar version. You want to be setting it to spherical. And if you hit Alt A, you can align it to our shape here. And that's fine. With the default settings at strength of one, that should be good enough. The other thing I'm going to do here is go to our birth grid. Sorry, not the birth grid. Uh, tap H, go to MP world. And you're going to want to go to ground collision plane, turn that off. Because that, what that means is that once these particles um, if they were to fall down, they're going to be colliding with this ground plane, which we don't want. So you can see as they go into the next event, they start turning off. So let's change it from text again to geometry. Go into the force modifier and hit add. Now you can click it in your scene. I like to use the H selector. Just tap H and select, where is it here? Gravity 2, in my case. So we are going to need a, a world modifier. So let's go into the MP world and drop, drop it into our lowest most event, which in this case is event 004 for me. Um, and we're going to need to add that into our simulation. So just tap H again, and we're just going to add number 2. You can also add a spin modifier. Okay, so you can either render this out in 3ds Max, or you can render it out in Element 3D within After Effects. So that's how I prefer um, to do it, just because of the speed. Of rendering, but if you have, you know, um, you can use Mental Ray, View Ray, Redshift within 3ds Max and composite the renders in After Effects that way. Or in this case, we're going to be exporting a OBJ sequence from 3ds Max and then use that to render within After Effects. So what we're going to need here in order to get these particle um, shapes as OBJ objects is the Mesher um, modifier. So go into uh, Compound Objects, let's create Mesher, let's drag it and click it into your scene, go into the settings, and then we're going to pick, you have to pick the particle flow source, so tap H, and then go to da, 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 Particle Flow Engine 2, Particle Flow Source 2. So what that does is it creates a copy of the entire stack of operators into one object. So now this one measure object, which is cloning the uh, particle flow simulation, can be exported properly. So there's a free script um, I like to use. It's called export obj sequence. I'll provide a link below so you guys can play around with it, but just run the script. 
you're going to want to open um, a destination. It's going to create a new folder here. Now the thing too, you guys need to make sure is that when you name your sequence, don't end it in a number because it will break the sequence. You'll end up with it being like 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, etc. Um, until it gets to 2, 10, 2, 11, 2, 12. It'll just break it. So you need to make sure you either don't include a number or you include an underscore. Um, so in this case, I'm going to put a 2 there, but as long as it ends with an underscore, the sequence should export in the correct order. So hit save. Um, in this case, I wanted to do the full 200 frames and click export. So even though it's not updating in the viewport, it is exporting every frame of the sequence as its own individual OBJ file, which can then be imported as a sequence into After Effects. Okay, so hopping into After Effects, let's create a new composition. In this case, I'm just going to do 1920 by 1080. And let's set it to 30 seconds. We're going to need a new solid layer to add element 3D to. And so we're going to also need to import a 3D sequence. And just select the uh, first file. There you go. So what we're going to need to do right off the bat, just want to change the material. For now, let's just use a preset shader. And in order to navigate around it, we are going to need a camera object. Let's just reposition our camera here. So in Element 3D, I recommend coming down to the render settings. And let's just change a few of the defaults. So the first thing I like to do is add ambient occlusion. It just adds some internal shading to the particles that adds a bit of realism. Let's change quality. Make it a little more intense. And I'm also going to add a physical environment. You can use any uh, HDR map you have. There are tons available online for free. Or you can use the um, backlight 4K or the default ones that come with Element 3D. Let's try displaying the background. Just gonna rotate around. So the thing about Element 3D is it does work with real lights as well. So let's just add in a scene light. Parallel. Looks pretty good. So let's also add some depth of field. It just takes a bit of trial and error in order to get the correct uh, aperture that you want. So I'm also going to add on a color correction. Let's add a new adjustment layer. Let's add some curves. So let's uh, do a RAM preview here and let's just kind of take a look. So one of the things I would have changed um, is the spin rate here at the beginning is a bit too extreme. But what you can do is if you go back into 3ds Max, just change the spin rate in the, uh, the first one down to like 20 or so. And that'll give it um, just some subtle movement before it explodes out there. So I'm not going to re-export this uh, for this tutorial, but um, you can get a sense of the kind of looks um, that you can get with just even a few...
um, different tweaks here. And, you know, there's a bunch of different uh, post-processing that you can do with just even using adjustment layers or even messing around with Element 3D if you want to add some spin effects. One of the things I like to do is go into the rotation here and just animate um, the Y rotation of the particle just so we can have that spinning around effect or even just animating the uh, the camera around the particles. So that completes uh, today's tutorial but let me know in the comments below if you guys have any comments, questions, or any suggestions for future tutorials and I'll get back to you. Hope you guys learned something and I'll see you next time.